This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Spondyl arthritis is not completed for you, no? This topic is completed or not complete? No, sir. Okay. Today we'll discuss about spondyl approach to spondyl arthritis and uh, mainly ankylosing spondylosis. Rest of the spondyl arthritis will complete in next class. So today our ob objectives are to gain a basic understanding of the spondyl arthritis and learn specific characteristics and how to differentiate it from spondyl arthritis from other chronic arthritis like RA and OA. And we have to know which joints are involved in which particular type of spondyl arthritis. And treatment, uh, we'll learn about the treatment and medications used. So what is the other name for spondyl arthritis? It is also called seronegative arthritis because most common arthritis we know is rheumatoid arthritis, which is positive for rheumatoid factor. That is called seropositive arthritis. So these uh, group of uh, arthritis are combined together and are called as Zero negative arthritis, which is rheumatoid factor negative arthritis. So the name spondyl arthropathies is uh, equivalent to zero negative spondyl arthritis. So main feature here is the absence of rheumatoid factor or other auto autoantibody. So what are the five main diseases in included in this uh, spondyl arthropathies? Mainly it is ankylosing spondylitis, that is the prototype. Others are psoriatic arthritis, reactive arthritis, enteropathic arthritis, which is associated with uh, IBD, and undifferentiated spondyl arthropathy. These are the five major groups which are included in the spondyl arthropathies. So reactive arthritis, what are the what is the triad? Reiter syndrome. Have you heard of Reiter syndrome? Anybody heard of Reiter syndrome? It is a triad of conjunctivitis, arthritis, and uveitis. That is a reactive arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis is something we we'll see in patients with pre existing psoriasis. Enteropathic arthritis is associated with inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Undifferentiated spondyl arthropathy is whatever we cannot fit into all these uh, either of the four criteria we can call it as undifferentiated so to classify a patient with whether he is having spondyl arthropathy the main symptom is inflammatory back pain back pain is the most common symptom we see but what is inflammatory back pain what is the difference we will learn about it so if the patient is having inflammatory back pain, plus one or more of the following, like positive family history, psoriasis, IBD, urethritis, cervicitis, acute diarrhea, which is nothing but reactive arthritis, buttock pain, alternating between right and left gluteal areas, enthesopathy. What is enthesitis? Someone answer, what is enthesitis? Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Now, what is enthesitis? Have you heard of it? No, sir. It's inflammation of the tendon at the insertion site. Can I? All the muscles insert to the bone, like tendons. So that insertion point is called enthes. So whenever inflammation is there, enthesitis or enthesopathy, that is the main feature of this spondyl arthropathies and sacroiliitis. So if we, if a patient comes with inflammatory back pain and any one of the following like positive family history, psoriasis, IBD, enthesitis, or sacroiliitis, we have to suspect spondyl arthropathies. So these are a diverse group of chronic inflammatory conditions. 
they do not present acutely they are very chronic link to distinctive clinical radiographic and genetic features so each of these uh, five syndromes have different clinical features different radiographic features and different genetic features mainly they involve the spine spondyl spondyl means what joints of the spine they are called spondyls the spondyl arthropathies are the diseases which involve the spine there can be overlap of symptoms between these five syndromes they are heterogeneous and phenotypically diverse diseases so other point is they can also present like peripheral joint symptoms i told it is this is of the spinal spinal cord spine joints of the spine but uh, some patients can present with peripheral joint symptoms so how do we diagnose so how does it how does the pathology of spondyl arthropathy is different different from the rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis is finished for you ha huh? are yes sir yes sir are yes sir okay the main pathology in are is reactive bone sclerosis and bone resorption there will be erosions bony erosions will be seen in reactive uh, rheumatoid arthritis here what is the difference is along with erosions there will be remodeling and formation of new bone the mesenchymal cells are uh, differentiated into osteoblasts into osteocytes and they form the new bone whenever the a bone is forming between the two vertebrae what will happen it will cause ankylosis bony ankylosis that means patient cannot it will become very patient cannot flex or extend the joints understood huh? formation of bony ankylosis is the characteristic feature in spondyl arthropathies whereas in rheumatoid arthritis it is just erosions as i already said there will be mesen mesen times to osteocytes differentiation and there will be formation of new bone formation there will be bony bridging you have to remember that here you can see left is the rheumatoid arthritis where osteoclasts are activated and they cause bony erosions they will have erosions whereas here tnf activation tumor necrosis factor activation will cause signaling which will cause syndesmophyte what is syndesmophyte the new bone formation between the two bones around the joint it will form a bridge bony bridge they are called syndesmophytes formation of spondyl arthritis this already we know the main features are enthesitis and osteitis and formation of new bone so so here it is given enthesitis what is enthesitis tendons ligaments and joint capsule fibers attached to the bone wherever they are attaching they, that is a strong tendency to produce fibrosis and calcification that is called enthesitis insertion point inflammation at the insertion point so we will learn about inflammatory back pain what is inflammatory back pain back pain is very common symptom anyone can complain of back pain but we have to differentiate it from inflammatory back pain how do we know whether it's mechanical or inflammatory these are the characteristic features of inflammatory back pain are they are worse in the night and early morning whereas mechanical back pain what will happen whenever we do work we will have back pain if the patient complains that back pain is more severe in the morning and uh, late night then you have to think of inflammatory back pain and the other thing is it interferes with the sleep patient will have severe back pain during sleep and he will wake up and walk in the middle of the night and the other thing is alternating buttock buttock pain he will tell buttock right buttock pain for a few days and later he will complain of left side pain and the prolonged morning stiffness for more than 30 minutes patient is telling whenever i get up i am having stiff back for more than 30 minutes and after doing some work it will get relieved so then you should think of inflammatory back pain 
Other thing is exercise alleviates the pain of inflammatory back pain, whereas rest makes it worse. It is opposite to the mechanical back pain. Mechanical back pain, what will happen whenever we exercise, pain will increase and on rest it will decrease. But here it is reversed and it affects mainly younger patients, whereas mechanical back pain affects little older patients. And the peak age is mid 20s and the onset is before the age of 40 years. So you have to remember all these points, mainly pain at the night time, which is uh, morning stiffness, more than 30 minutes, and pain relieves on exercise, and effects less than 40 years of age. These are the points towards inflammatory back pain. So when do you consider it as significant? If it is persisting for more than three months, then only you have to think of spondyl arthropathies and it causes detrimental effects on the quality of life. The spine, what will happen ultimately? There will be erosions and new bone formation which causes the spine to fuse. In ankylosing spondylosis, the, spinal, the spine will be fused which will cause ligamentous ossification and syndesmophytosis. That is called bamboo spine. That means patient whole spine will act as a stick. There will not be any joints. It will be like bending a stick. So it will be very stiff. The fused spine acts like a long bone, incapable of appropriately dissipating the energy of traumatic events. So what happens when there is a trauma or stress on the spine, there will be different points. So the stress will be equally distributed and there will be cushioning effect of the intervertebral disc. But here what happens, the whole spine is becoming into a single bone, like a stick. Then whenever pressure is there or any stress is there, what will happen? It will break. So these patients have a tendency to get fractures. Easy fractures will be there. So the spine mechan mechanics will be altered. There is susceptibility to vertebral column fractures and spinal cord injury with trivial trauma. And there will be gait unsteadiness and increased susceptibility to falls. So here you can see CT scan showing the, this is the bamboo spine. What happened whenever there is stress, it caused fracture of the thoracic, uh, it caused, caused fracture at the thoracic level, which is impinging on, on the iota. So it is very prone for fractures. So what are the extra articular manifestations? So I told you there is psoriatic arthritis, there is the enteropathic arthritis. So patient can have skin changes like psoriasis. Most commonly seen extra articular manifestation is anterior uveitis. This is very important. So most of the patients will come will have anterior uveitis. Whenever you are suspecting spondyl arthropathies, you should ask the patient for ophthalmological uh, deferral and you may find anterior uveitis which supports your diagnosis. Patient can have inflammatory bowel disease symptoms and can have cardiac, renal or pulmonary manifestation. As I already told, ocular manifestations include mainly uveitis, which is anterior uveitis, which occurs in 25% to 40% of the patients. But there is no correlation between the disease course and the inflammatory eye disease. Suppose the patient is having very mild uveitis. You need not think patient will have very mild arthritis. The disease is not correlating. Like example, for example, in diabetes, if there is diabetic retinopathy, the disease correlates with diabetic nephropathy. If there is severe retinopathy, we will think of severe nephropathy also. But here it is not like that. Whenever there is anterior uveitis, it doesn't correlate with the disease activity. So patient will present with acute unilateral pain and photophobia and blurring of vision may also occur. There can also be cataract and glaucoma. Posterior sinica can be formed. The other uh, symptom is conjunctivitis. It is also seen. It is more transient and less relapsing course than the uveitis. Patient can complain of visual problems and should be referred to ophthalmologist.
there can cutaneous manifestations are psoriasis flap psoriasis can be there which is scaly erythematous hyperkeratotic lesions so whenever you suspect some spondyloarthropathy you have to examine the skin of the patient properly to look for any scaly lesions we have to look at the gluteal scalp scalp line groin posterior auricular region some areas are not generally visible so you have to look particularly in gluteal cleft scalp and scalp line so this is a patient of psoriasis you can see the white scaly lesions is also typical psoriatic lesion behind the ears and the scalp line hair line along the hair line you can see the psoriatic flaps this is also not correlating with the extent of joint disease as as with ophthalmological uveitis here also there is no correlation between the disease activity and skin lesions the nail changes can be seen like nail pitting onycholysis you can see the here there is pitting of the nail you can see the pits in the nail there is onycholysis the nail bed is degenerated toenails you can see here there is loss of the tip of the nails that is called onycholysis or you can see the dip sausage digits distal interpharyngeal joint involvement this is penicillin cup pattern seen in psoriatic arthritis you can see the cup like saucer this is like pencil you can see this a uh, pencil cap like cap and this is the pencil tip can you see penicillin cup deformity are you following yes sir so the other extra articular manifestations are they can have aortic regurgitation and other cardiac manifestations like heart blocks also they can have conduction abnormalities like heart blocks then there can be apical pulmonary fibrosis which is mostly asymptomatic renal disease is also common because mostly we'll use anesthetics for this patient so whenever we are using anesthetics then they can have renal disease the other mechanism is this is associated with iga nephropathy so along with uh, articular disease they can have iga nephropathy which can manifest as proteinuria and hematuria or they can be secondary amyloidosis manifested by nephrotic syndrome so renal disease can occur in three forms either with nsi abuse or by the way of iga nephropathy or secondary amyloidosis so the most common gene associated is hla b27 70% of the individuals carry hla b27 gene so the strength of uh, association varies between the different subtypes of spondyloarthropathies so you can see here ang spond there is more than 90% of patients will have positive for hla b27 whereas in reactive arthritis or reiter syndrome it is more than 80% in ibd it is 75% in psoriatic arthritis it is 50% so this is the strength of association between hla b27 and subtypes of spondyloarthropathies first we will discuss about ang spond which is an inflammatory disease of the spine and axial joints it is more of auto inflammatory disease rather than auto immune disease why we are calling it as auto inflammatory disease in autoimmune disease what will happen there will be formation of antibodies against the own cells but here it is more due to inflammation so in these patients we will find high levels of tumor necrosis factor and transforming growth factor tgf so what is the treatment here anti tnf medication so here it is more of an auto inflammatory disease due to increased tumor necrosis factor and other various interleukins 
it mainly affects young men men are more prone between 15 to 30 years of age women also can be infected uh, affected but 3 is to 1 ratio men is to women is 3 is to 1 and the other thing is uh, women can present with different complaints like mainly neck pain and breast pain without typical inflammatory back pain so there is a classification criteria for ankylosing spondylosis so the basic prerequisite for uh, diagnosis ank spond is patient should be less than 45 years of age and there is there should be inflammatory back pain for more than 3 months then only you have to consider of a ank spond so what is the what are the other features which should be there there should be on x ray or mri there should be sacroiliitis less more than one one of the following features like uh, active inflammation of mri on mri or definite radiographic sacroiliitis this should be present and along with that there should be either one of the features or there should be hla b27 positivity plus two of the features if there is x-ray positivity one of these features is uh, enough to classify the identify the ank spawn if it is a uh, x-ray negative and only hla b27 positive then there should be at least two features what are the spondyl arthropathy features inflammatory back pain arthritis enthesitis commonly seen in the heel anterior uveitis dactylitis is dactylitis is inflammation of the fingers psoriasis trans disease or ulcerative colitis good response to nsaids this is one of the typical feature of spondyl arthropathy or ank spond whenever you give nsaid patient will have better relief and there can be family history of spondyl arthropathy hla b27 and elevated crp so out of these uh, features if there is a either one plus x ray positivity then you can classify as the ank spond or if there is either two plus hla b27 positivity then also you can diagnose as ank spond sensitivity is 83% and specificity is 84% so this is kscs criteria sir so how will it appear in sir sacroiliitis in x ray how will it how can we yeah. different we will discuss all that in investigations i'll tell you what are the radiological features okay sir. so here you can see the patient one patient came 1947 he is like this with years going what is happening here there is fusion of the spine so patient is having exaggerated there will be loss of lumbar lordosis and there will be kyphosis so gradually patient will unable to stand straightly and there will be use of stick here this is what you have no this is the normal x ray have you ever seen x ray hip this is x ray pelvis with both hip joints mm -hmm. hip joint yeah so here you can see this line huh? sacroiliac joint this is sacrum this is sacroiliac joint can you see so this is where you have to look yes, for sir. the yes, symptoms the other this is a pubic symphysis this is ilioischial line and this line is iliopectineal line so these are all the lines seen in uh, this x-ray but mainly you have to focus on the sacroiliac joint this is the normal x-ray now we will see the patient with ank spawn this is the zoomed x-ray you can see this this is the sacroiliac joint you can see the whitening huh? at the joint and there is no yes. joint space yes sir this means there is new bone formation is there whenever there is new bone formation it will appear white and you cannot see the joint space also is obliterated so this is sacroiliitis this is how it appears on x-ray this is also a sacroiliitis initial stages in initial stages what will happen there will be erosion but new bone formation is not yet present so here you can see the joint space is increased 
can you see in the normal x ray what is happening this is the joint space it is a thin line here what's happening it is increased this is the early stage of sacroiliitis later it turns into this white thing where the joint space is obliterated this is called pseudo widening of the sacroiliac joint due to erosions of the bony surfaces but uh, nowadays what is happening the way we can detect by mri this is called still sequence in mri you can find the you can see this white spots on mri this is the sacroiliac joint this black line on either side can you see this white spot here also white yes yeah this suggests there is inflammation whenever there is inflammation you can find like this p2 images this is earliest before x ray if you want if you are having any doubt that patient is having ankylosing spondylosis when other features are there you have you can go ahead sir mri then you will detect the patient diagnose him early coming to vertebrae what are the features seen the anterior corners will be there no in vertebrae there will be erosions of the anterior corners you can see this and there will be formation of syndesmophytes between the two vertebrae so this is called squaring of the vertebrae whenever the anterior corners are eroded it is called squaring of vertebrae and there is syndesmophyte formation this is called shiny corners ultimately what will happen all these vertebrae will be fused together this is the bamboo spine you can see it is like a single stick there is no joints intervertebral joints are not seen all the vertebrae are fused this is called bamboo spine understood the radiological features very important in ankh spine so the same thing is given characteristic feature is syndesmophyte formation or bamboo spine so ossification is present deep to the lateral collateral ligaments and uh, it follows the contour of the intervertebral disc spaces the annulus fibrosus will be there no in between the two vertebrae that will be ossified and there can be degenerative spurs also so you have to remember basically syndesmophytes and squaring of the vertebrae and bamboo spine it can be graded based on the x ray grade 0 is normal grade 1 is possible you can think of grade 2 is minimal sacroiliitis grade 3 is moderate this is all the radiologist will grade the sacroiliitis when there whenever there is ankylosing or there is a new bone formation we can call it grade 4 so it basically begins in the sacroiliac joints and progresses upwards and can involve the entire spine beyond the spine uh this is also important axial joints in axial joints both shoulder and hip joints are also included axial joint doesn't mean only spine along with spine there shoulder joint and hip joints are also included in the axial joints other joints are peripheral joints like elbow knee ankle wrist joint they are all peripheral but axial joints include both spine and shoulder and hip joints okay so there can be erosive changes at the rotator cuff insertion and hip joint is concerned ha tell sir how to differentiate between an osteophyte and a syndesmophyte syndesmophyte what will happen is it connects the it is a bridging thing it connects two bones whereas osteophyte is separately one bone will be there in the in osteoarthritis what will happen there can be osteophytes which is uh, in between the joint there will be a separate bone hanging around which obstructs the movement of the joint but here what will happen it is a bridging bone between the two uh, at, at the joint it will bridge the two vertebrae understood huh? okay sir hmm. that's why it is called ankylosis it is making the joint to fuse so this is the normal spine early ankylosing spondylosis there is inflammation this is uh, detected by mri 
if you want to diagnose at this stage you have to go for mri when there is advanced ankylosing spondylosis there is then you have to go for see the edges of the vertebrae here there is intervertebral disc here initially here what happened this syndesmophyte what it happened it caused fusion of the two vertebrae this is annulus fibrosis so advanced stages you can diagnose with the help of x ray so the same thing here now you can see clearly syndesmophytes what what they are doing your doubt is clear now huh? these are the syndesmophytes yes, they are bridging the two vertebrae okay. so finally this is bamboo spine you can see the nice nicely one white line is there now along all the vertebrae so it is bamboo spine. Have you seen bamboo? Does it look like this? Bamboo? This is bamboo spine. You should never forget. So, initially it will be inflammatory stage. During that phase, what will the patient complain? Extreme pain will be there, back pain will be there, nighttime severe pain is there, and morning stiffness, and patient will complain of fatigue. And there can be finally there will be ankylosis whenever there is ankylosis patient will complain of increased stiffness and decreased range of movements he is not able to flex extend or something and there will be abnormal posture see the posturing here what happened there is due to ankylosis formation patient is having kyphosis And the other characteristic feature I told is enthesitis. So patient will complain of heel pain. And there will be tender, tender uh, points at the insertion of the tendons. Patients with AS get funny pains. These are also called funny pains. Wherever the muscle is inserting, patient will complain of pain. So, so then ten syllable. Uh, go ahead. What, tennis what elbow. Asking? Tennis elbow is different. That is ortho, no? No, this is a systemic complaint. Tennis elbow is localized complaint, no? Okay, Here you sir. can see like this. Here you have to look for the tender points. You can see redness is there, no? Here. This is enthesiopathy, Achilles tendon. This is the diagrammatic representation here. This is the tendon insertion. Here, what is happening? Inflammation and erosion, which causes enthesiopathy. So, wherever the tendon is inserting, you can see the bone is eroded. There is, it is not normal. The contour is very rough. So, it is called enthesiopathy. Common site is Achilles tendon. Can also be seen in patella. Tibial tubercle, base of the fifth metatarsal, plantar fasciitis. Patient also can complain of plantar fasciitis. And other sites are answer in bursa, greater trochanter, iliac crest, rotator cuff, and postochondral junctions. So, physical examination, you have to look for the tender point and spinal involvement. So, how do you measure the spinal involvement? There is a modified Schober test. And the other thing is chest expansion. Chest expansion minimum it should be five centimeters. If it is less than that, patient is having some rib cage uh, ankylosis. That's why patient is not able to perform a proper expansion of the chest. There will be less than five centimeters expansion. And the other thing is modified Schober test. What is modified Schober test? What you will do? You have to ask the patient to stand and Along the posterior uh, iliac spines, you have to draw a horizontal line. See, you have to draw a horizontal line at the posterior superior iliac spine. This is the horizontal line. From this, you have to draw a line 10 centimeters above the posterior superior uh, iliac spine line. Above the 10 centimeters, you have to draw another line. So, you will ask the patient to bend forward while bending forward what will happen this line will 
go further away from the posterior superior iliac spine line so it will go further away it is more than 10 centimeters away that is initially it is 10 centimeter now it is 20 centimeters then it is normal if the, the patient is having ankylosis that will be very less understood now the other thing is occiput to wall test In normal patient you can touch the wall with occiput whenever you are standing straight but here what will happen due to kyphosis this distance will increase occiput to wall distance will increase the other uh, tests are lateral flexion fingertip to floor distance this is fingertip to floor distance this is the fingertip and this is the floor you have to calculate the distance so these are all not for diagnosis this is these are used for follow up if you are giving treatment initially you will find patient is able to not able to properly bend and this distance is very like 30 cm with treatment what will happen it will decrease gradually then your treatment is working so these the tests are used for follow up rather than diagnosis and lateral flexion is also there that is when you are standing your uh, what fingertips will touch the thigh so if you laterally flex what will happen maximum extent of the fingertips you have to measure so you have to keep a record of that and gradually you have to look for any improvement is there or not you can also do sacroiliac compression testing cervical spine examination should be done to look for atlanto axial instability so what are the laboratory investigations there is no definitive laboratory investigation to diagnose ang spawn but usually you can see normocytic normochromic anemia because it is a chronic inflammatory disease and there, there can be elevated esr or crp during inflammatory phase and there can be reactive thrombocytosis hla b27 all, already i told 90% of patients it will be positive in ang spawn 75 to 90 they give in harrison you remember as 90% in general population hla b27 is found in 6% of the population but here in ang spawn it is found in around 90% so how do we manage the main goal is symptomatic relief of the pain and stiffness the main complaint is pain and stiffness so we have to address those problems and we have to restore the functional ability of the patient the patient uh, should be able to do his normal day to day activities and you have to prevent the joint damage before the bamboo spine occur you have to prevent the damage if the patient comes to you at the stage of bamboo spine what can you do you cannot do anything so you have to diagnose at the stage of inflammatory stage and you have to prevent the joint damage and prevent the spinal fusion and complications and minimize extra spinal and extra articular manifestation this is your treatment goals so the main thing is physical therapy and exercise you can uh, ask the patient to do home based exercise and supervised group there will be ang spawn groups they can sit together and do exercises and initial evaluation and training should be given by the physiotherapist so coming to pharmacological therapy as i already said it is these ang uh, the spondyloarthropathies respond well to the nsaids that is also one of the diagnostic feature no so it is involved, included in the criteria so unless contraindicated patient should be started with nsaids like ibuprofen or naproxen you can give something and that is the first line of treatment in all symptomatic as so what is the first line of treatment in symptomatic ang spawn is nsaid patient is not responding to single nsaid you can add the second one in olden days we, we used to give sulfasalazine whenever when there is no availability of uh, anti tnf drugs then we used to give sulfasalazine this is the only disease modifying agent that had been demonstrated to be useful in ang spawn in rheumatoid arthritis you might have heard dmart this is modifying agents like that here also sulfasalazine is disease modifying agent so the current uh, drugs which we are using in ang spawn is tnf alpha antagonist anti tnf alpha so what are the examples you know commonly used is infliximab others are etanercept adalimumab
वन सेकेंड हेलो इनको टेन मिनट इंप्रूवेंट इन देशेंट असेसमेंट ऑफ पेन एंड फंक्शनल स्टेटस एंड इंफ्लमेशन इज असेस बै मॉर्निंग स्टिफ्ने सो एटी पर्सेंट ऑफ द पेशेंट रेस्पॉन्ड टू द्रीटमेंट विथ एन एफ आल what is the problem with tnf alpha if the patient is having some latent tuberculosis after giving infliximab what will happen it can cause the reactivation of the tuberculosis so before giving tnf alpha inhibitors you have to do what will you do the tb mont to test you have to do and then only we have to go ahead with tnf alpha antibodies so what are the predictors of response so if the patient is presenting at younger age or shorter disease duration or good functional ability or elevated esr and crp elevated esr and crp is good prognostic sign why because the patient is still present in the inflammatory stage he did not go into the ankylosing phase in ankylosing phase what will happen the esr and crp will again come down so whenever there is a younger age shorter disease duration good functional ability and elevated esr and presence of hla b27 these are all the predictors of good response to tnf antagonists the other drugs which can be used are this is the new drug secokinumab this is interleukin 17 so along with tnf interleukin 17 and 23 are also involved in the pathogenesis of the ang spawn so antibody against the interleukin 17 which is secokinumab is also recently tried and it is shown to be having uh, benefits as with tnf alpha and methotrexate some studies have suggested that methotrexate may be effective in some patients but it's not being used now if the patient is complaining of severe pain then you can go ahead with short course of steroids very low dose should be given and should be tapered off early uh, if he is complaining of sacroiliac joint pain you can give injection of the long acting corticosteroid Okay, the others we will discuss in the next class. Okay, do you have any doubts? Everyone understood, ah? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Next class we will continue with the other arthropathies, spondyl arthropathies. Okay, everyone read today about the approach and. Ankylosing spondylosis is also very important for your final exam. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.